All right, kind of Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Shalom to the Torah tribes. Yasha, Allah, give him a chorus. Allah, give him praise unto the Most High God, Yahweh. In the name of Zombie Yasha, and Yahweh, Shalom, Brother Yasha, Allah, give him back to y'all yet. Another video to the Spirit by Yahweh, by Hashem, by Hashiach, on Allah, Yahweh, Shah. All right, so I'm going to get straight into this, all right? I'm going to get straight into this. It's going into uh, John 3.16, Breakdown Through the Spirit, okay? Because a lot of Christians get this misconstrued. Um, and the world really uh, misinterprets misinterprets this verse greatly, all right? Um, so I'm going to read it real quick. Everybody really should know it, probably has heard about it, probably has seen it at least one time in their life. That's how popular this verse is. But nevertheless, just because it's popular doesn't mean that it, its wide interpretation is correct. So let's go to the book of uh, uh, John chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life so one thing we have to understand is that um in the scriptures there's more than one world that's created all right there's more than one world that's i that's identified in the scriptures when you go to the book of luke chapter 2 verse 1 for example it's the book of luke chapter 2 and verse number one and it reads and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from caesar augustus that all the world should be taxed so you might read this precept, this verse, and think that, oh, Caesar Augustus was actually seized the, the, the governor, if you will, or the emperor over the Roman Empire. Now, you might read that and be like, wait, he didn't tax the whole world because he didn't tax China. He didn't tax um, Southern Africa. He didn't tax the so-called Native Americans, the northern tribes, the 10 tribes over there in uh, uh, the western part of the world. He didn't tax them. Okay. He taxed the whole uh, 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 world of Rome, okay? So that's, here we see that the world can be known as, what, a certain government body of people, all right? Even in that definition, when you study the Greek, because you have to study the original languages, all right, of the text. If you read the Talmud, it's, it's originally written, written in Aramaic and uh, Hebrew. When you read the Bible, you have to look at the original language to fully understand it. OK, if you do not look into the original language, there is no way you can tend, uh, you, there's no way you can de uh, definitively say that you have the right answers about it and the right interpretation about it without looking into its original language. The Bible is written in Hebrew, a little Aramaic and Greek. And what we're reading in here is is Greek. OK, it's, it's translated from the Greek into the English. So this word for world is cosmos, which means a government of body of people. Okay, not talking about the whole earth. Okay, not in this verse, not in this context. It says, for God so loved the world. Now we're going to see who God loved. All right, we're going to see what nation God loved. You can't show me anywhere in the Old Testament or New Testament um, where the Most High God um, confesses his love for anyone outside of the nation of Israel. Okay, let's go to the book of... Malachi chapter 1. Malachi chapter 1 verse 1. The burden of the word of Israel, Salaki, of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. So let's stop right there. The Lord is identifying that he loves who? He loves Israel. Okay, that's who he loves. It says, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? saith the Lord, yet I love Jacob. So the Lord, he loves Jacob, but what? And I hated Esau. So he loves Jacob and he hates Esau. He still feels this way um, because we know that the Lord, he does not change, right? So the Lord, right? He loves Israel and hates Jacob. If we read John three sixteen, and and uh, 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 think that it's talking about everybody in the whole earth, Esau can't be part of that world. Clearly, because God hates Esau. Paul even reiterates that fact in Romans chapter 9, verse 13, as he says, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So, for one, Esau can't be part of that world that um, um, Christ is talking about in John three sixteen that God so loved. And we see here that clearly God has a love. He confesses his love to Israel. All right. We're going to see another text. Another Bible verse establishing uh, um, that the Mosai loves Israel, okay? It's the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 7 
in verse 6, it says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. This is Israel, right? Well, this is really Moses talking to the nation of Israel, right? It says, The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you. See that? The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people, but because the Lord loved you. So the Lord loves Israel, right? And because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. All right. So the Lord loves Israel. OK, we established that two, two Bible verses. OK, and when you read all throughout the, uh, the book of Isaiah, you read through, uh, throughout all the book of Isaiah, the Lord chooses Israel. Isaiah 45 and 4, Isaiah 44 and 1. Right. Plenty of other precepts. Right. That the Lord has chosen Israel and he has set his love upon the nation of Israel. Nobody with a uh, who is intellectually responsible would would uh, debate this fact and would argue against that. All right. So that's the only nation that the most High so loved. So when we go back to John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world. All right. Now, we have to remember, going back to the definition of the word world, world, when you look up its definition, has so many different definitions because we know that there's so many different types of worlds. You even have the sea world, okay, the sea world. You have the animal world. You have the, uh, the world of, you know what I'm saying, music. You have so many different types of worlds. World, that word alone can be used in all different types of ways. You can even say to your loved one, you know, um, you are my world. I mean, what do you what are you essentially saying there? That you're everything to me, right? This doesn't necessarily mean that you are a planet in the galaxy, the so-called galaxy. Okay, world does not always denote the whole earth. Okay, because we can even read in the Bible. Let's go to the book of uh, Psalms. It's the book of Psalms, chapter ninety. Psalm chapter 90, verse 2, it says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world. So here we see, this is a prayer of Moses, the man of the Most High, as it says in the footnote, all right, in the beginning. I don't know if you can see that. All right. Um, yeah. Right. Um, but it says, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. In the beginning, it says that. Okay. And in verse two, he's saying, look, before the mountains were brought forth, wherever thou hadst formed the earth and the world. So the earth is distinguished from the world. You see that the earth is distinguished from the world. So the world does not always mean the whole earth. OK. It says even from everlasting, everlasting, thou art God. Now, we're going to read another precept showing you that there is more than one world clearly established in the Bible. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter one, verse two. Have he in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. He made the worlds. So the Most High has made worlds, plural. There's more than one world. All right, there's more than one world. Hebrews chapter 1, and uh, it's like 11 or verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were formed. It's like it were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So there's more than one world. All right, you understand? So let's see which world God so loved. All right, let's see which world God so loved. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, and verse number 17. But Israel, Israel is who we're talking about here. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. An everlasting salvation and everlasting life, as it says in John 3, 16, these two things are the same thing. It says, with everlasting salvation, ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. So Israel is a world without end. We see here that the Mosai is clearly identifying Israel as its own world. Going back to its definition, right? It, it could be denoted as a people group, certain people group. Okay, so when we read in John 3, 16, it says, God so loved the world. Okay. That world is talking about the world of Israel. All right. It says what? That he gave his only begotten son, right? It says that he gave 
his only begotten son. That whosoever be believeth in him, whosoever believeth in him of the world, right, should not perish but have everlasting life. You see that? Now, I'm going to even skip up to verse 14 real quick. Let's go to John 3, verse 14. It says, And Moses lifted up, as, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So, if you didn't read the Old Testament, you would have no idea what that's going into. That's why you need to read the Old Testament before getting to the New. If you just read the New, you wouldn't understand anything that it's saying. It's like we're watching Star Wars, the second movie, without watching the first one. You're not going to understand what is going on. You're not going to understand the characters or anything like that, anything of that sort. You're going to have a lack of understanding, right? So, in the same manner... Is with the scriptures you can't just skip to the new testament and think to have the understanding of it without reading the old testament right so let's go to the book of uh numbers chapter 21. let's go to numbers chapter 21 and verse number seven this is the serpent that christ is talking about that moses lifted up it says therefore the people came to moses and said we have sinned for we have spoken against the lord and against thee Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. So essentially what's going on here is the Mosai is plaguing Israel. Because Israel is going off. And they're sinning against the Mosai. So therefore that's why the Lord is sending serpents. All right. Among the people. Biting the people. All right. It says in Moses prayed for the people. And this people was the nation of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses make thee a fiery serpent. And set it upon a pole. And it's not going to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. All right. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. You see that? When that, that any man is going to any man of Israel. So he did that, got the serpent of brass. He lifted it up for all Israel to see. And they looked upon it and they were, and they were saved. They were healed of their infirmity. All right. So Moses, he did that for Israel. He didn't do that for everybody. He didn't lift up the serpent uh, in the wilderness because who was in the wilderness with Moses? It was just Israel. It was Israel. All right. That was uh, with Moses in the wilderness. Anybody will agree to that. So when we go back to John 3 and verse 14, getting the context, right? Getting the context. Context is always um, crucial to any text or reading. Any historical text, any uh, piece of literature, uh, context is going to give you that better understanding. So when you go to John 3 and verse 14, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, meaning in that same manner, must the son of man be lifted up. So Moses, just following logic, Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness for Israel. So in like manner, Yahweh Shah or Jesus Christ has to be has to be lifted up because that serpent, a brass is symbolic for Christ. We know that the law is spiritual. Romans chapter seven verse fourteen. Okay, so just like how Moses lifted up that serpent of brass for the Israelites, even so, even in that same manner, must Christ be lifted up. All right, must be lifted up for Israel again. All right, it says. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Meaning whosoever of Israel. It's not talking about everybody. As we go to verse 16, and establish that that world is, is whosoever of the world of Israel. All right. Now, this was just a breakdown through the spirit. Um, not going to go into every single detail. And there's even more um, precepts and stuff like that to, to prove that John 3.16 is not talking about everybody. All right. It's, it's namely talking about the world of Israel, all right, through the Spirit. So with that, all praise to Yahweh. By Shema Mashak, O Malachi Yahweh Shah. Lord willing, this is edifying. The water for tuning in. Whether Yahshua Allah, Shalom.